Good evening, Evan, and welcome to another Mech Merlin stream. Today we are building the Quarky's Z67 Yun production unit. If you guys remember last week, I built the the prototype version. You know, it came with the yellow aluminum top, polycarb bottom, brass weight, and all that. And yeah, I I did like the board. It just wasn't as clacky as I was expecting it to be. The production unit does have a few changes, mainly with a, with the mounting. They're both gasket mount, but for the production unit, it's gasket socks instead of gasket strips that you paste on the top and bottom half of, of the board. But yeah, let me show you guys the production unit. Surprise, surprise, um, Corky's actually sent me the exact same looking board. So it's it's another yellow board. Um, the yellow matches perfectly. Um, <laughs> The main the main difference with the production unit is that it's 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 got the gasket socks for the plate itself and this particular unit comes with a brass bottom and a much larger weight as you guys can see it's it's, it's still going to be PVD here let me show you the differences between the two look at that see so the prototype has a much smaller weight and polycarb bottom. Like you can still choose to get a polycarb bottom if you want the LEDs to show up, but the weight is going to be completely different as you guys can see. So still, still PVD and all that. And this board is significantly heavier. My gosh. But yeah, overall, just from the top down, they look identical. You have to flip your board around to see any kind of difference. Yeah, looks identical from the sides and everything. So you, so you can't tell. Same shade of yellow, same everything, same bezel thickness, same curvatures, same everything except the bottom. And look at that, it's even got the same type of USB port. So yeah, the only way you can tell is by the weight and when you swap it around or when you flip it around i mean so yeah we should start the stream let me turn on a few tunes and we can get going so yeah we're gonna be building this guy and then comparing the two um i do not have any more ks9s left but by experience of building the prototype i did feel like it was missing a little bit of crispness so this time around i'm going to build it with alpacas and screw the color matching you know like i really wanted to have like the yellow switches but honestly once you put keycaps on it doesn't matter what your what, what your switches look like so i'll be using alpacas there we go as usual i've got owl lab stabs on my pcb and this is a soldered build. So the PCBs are, are exactly the same. The The only difference was in the shape of the plate, which you guys will see later. So yeah, let me, actually, I do need to pull out the plate. I need to pull out the plate. So my sonnet should come in tomorrow, nice. Bet you're excited for that. Baby dog says hello, hello to you as well. Thanks for joining in. I see you are a new chatter. HR Toby, good to see you again. Came home at the right time. I am at the start of a build of the production unit. Oh, look at that. I see more dirt all around. So really hoping this is not what they're gonna be sending to the customers. Hopefully this was a prototype of the production, because that was definitely definitely prototype, but maybe this was like a, they just got one together really quick for me, you know? <laughs> Cause that's pretty dirty. That's pretty dirty. I would hope that no customers receive their board like this. Here, let me pull it out. Let me show it off better with the front facing cam. There you guys can see the gasket socks. See that? It's a little white bits. Gasket socks were popularized by Owl Labs, and I'm glad to see that other keyboard studios are starting to do that. It makes the gasket installation process so much easier. Yeah. So 
so we will leave it as is and um you know how can i best clean brass i think it's just basically just water don't use alcohol when cleaning your boards unless it's the pcb because if you use alcohol you will disrupt the anodization or the pvd coating so yeah don't do that long ass tabs yeah for sure yeah if you guys remember for the prototype these these were still the same tabs i think just that they were you know they they rested on actual gaskets they did not have these gasket socks Oh no, look at how much slack I have on that table. That is tiny. Crap. Uh. Jeez, okay. Uh. I will definitely, definitely let uh, Quarkies know that maybe an extra inch would go a long way. Is that your hands on the brass? No, it came like this. Holy crap, okay. You know what? You know what I'm gonna do? Yes! Okay, so this one's about a little longer. It's a little longer. Okay. Okay, we can do this. We can do this. Sometimes you wonder if you have the last working KC60 from that buy. Look at the reviews and quite a few users had theirs fail in the past. I think it might be because of the PCB. You know, it's not the, not so much the, the board itself. It's just a tray mount, right? If I re remember correctly. If I'm not mistaken, the KC60, at least the KC60 that I had, came with the bootmapper client PCB. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's sticking in, so I am going to probably just remove the heat shrink for now. Yeah, that's the difference. Oh yeah, the original heat shrink is 
tiny. Yeah, that's probably why. All right. Okay, hopefully I don't damage it. Yours was BMC, I thought they came with TMK stock. I forget the details, but I, I swear mine was a uh, boot mapper client. There we go. Whew. Got it off at last, hooray. Okay, and now it will fit. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Wait, doesn't really want to stay on. It's now working with Quantum Painter. Nice. will definitely recommend to Quarkies that he needs a little longer cable. Okay, granted, I didn't even try, but knowing my, uh, knowing my skill level with stuff of a uh, meticulous nature like this, I knew that it would take me like 30 minutes. It's better to just make it longer. Like so. So let's do it. Test out the board. Obviously, it won't light up. Well, it's still light up, but okay. All right, lights up. I would agree with you that the website has been more reliable than the native app. Funny enough, I think that was the same case with the Vertex Arc 60. It was the same case with the, what else? Yeah, on, on, on quite a few boards actually. Which was surprising because as, as Zark says, the app just loads the website, but something's going on there. Something is going on. is going to sleep. Thank you for joining in. Oh wait, that's the wrong.
You have a basic client that can change key map and RGB. That's pretty cool. Just looks pretty raw. The QMK configurator used to look so raw. Wait, that is the wrong screw. AKA same capabilities via just looks bald. <laughs> Okay, the weight is clean. There we go. All right, we are going to put some keycaps on this. I'm gonna try and keep them PBT Cherry profile as well. Let's see. I don't really have too many key sets that would match well with yellow, but maybe I can do, you know, if I have a light set, maybe I'll go for a dark set. I'll, I'll go do a dark set. Let's do that. So. Here we go. They're complementary colors, so yeah, really. Purple and yellow? Look at that. Purple and yellow. That looks blue to me. And so far, so good. So far, looks like a nice set. It's not really about that, it's more about AI being trained using artist work without their consent. Ah, uh, nope, that is not the right profile. Here we go, that's the right profile. And page up, there we go. There we go, got it. Okay, what do you guys think? Does, does purple and yellow really work? Because I don't know, and I don't think I'll ever know unless I get those chroma glasses. But it's not like I'm colorblind to all the colors, so I don't know how it would affect affect my ambition for things. There. Oh, this is a heavy board. <laughs> needs a purple escape the purple escape that they provided is not a it's not a cool symbol oh i love how this board sounds i like it better than this one the, hey this one's a little bit more muted yeah okay i like it apocalypse was the correct way Alpaca was the way to go. All right, let's do a quick typing test. Take this away. Clean up a little bit. Pause my music. And here we go. So once again, this is the Z67 Yun uh, production unit with a brass bottom built, built with carbon fiber plate, alpaca switches, and topped with cannon keys or cannon caps. Is it cannon caps? Yep, cannon caps Esper. Here we go.
There we go. So compare that with this one. Yeah, I like the sound of this much more than I like the sound of this. Not to say that this is a bad sound, just that between these two boards, I prefer this build. And Cavite Tech, I will take your word for it that purple on yellow is a good match. Because <laughs> right now, I, I can't really tell. Well, blue on yellow is a good match to me, so I, I'm happy. <laughs> Yeah, I think the the reason why it's also a bit more snappy is because it's like a brass weight at the bottom. Right, it's not just a brass accent piece here, but the whole bottom piece is brass. You know? The whole bottom piece is brass. Let's see, I am much happier with the production grade unit compared with the prototype unit. Though the prototype is also different in material. I know that the, you know, when you guys do buy this board, which is actually available right now, it's currently in group buy. If you guys do buy this board, you do have the option to change out the materials. I kind of wish he would have sent me the exact same board. Like, I appreciate that he sent me like a brass bottom, but I wish that he would have sent the polycarb one as well. You know, just so I can, compare the sounds better. It's not like I use like the same switches, but but still I wish it would have been more 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 of the of the same stuff. Cuz right now so many things are different between the two boards. Um much happier with the production grade. I did notice that at least with my unit, the brass internals and even like some of the back had a bunch of oxidization on it. It looked like it had gone through many hands. Um, knowing Quarky still, like he, he also had like the Z60, that one was immaculate. Like, so I'm pretty sure that the stuff that you saw on mine was just because, oh, we need to send it over to Merlin, we gotta be quick, blah, 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 you know. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, in terms of the anodization, anodization was consistent between the proto and the production grade. Um, I really did enjoy the gasket socks versus the regular gaskets that the prototype had. You know, they they do result in different sounds, and it's also a much more pleasant build experience putting gasket socks on rather than having to peel off your gaskets and making sure that they're straight, that they're not crooked. And you know, if you screw up like the peeling or you screw up like the like the adhesion, then it's a lot harder to put back together. Let's see, removing oxidization from brass isn't too difficult. Yes, you can use ketchup, but that might also, you know, I, I, I don't know what that's gonna do with the rest of the finish. So I'm a bit hesitant in doing that. I used to use ketchup for, um, I used to work at like a furniture shop of sorts and to polish the knobs, I would need to use like, you know, so what we did was we used ketchup if we were in like a pinch, but we did have like a solution to like polish it and then we'd seal it with lacquer. No, but then of course over time like brass doorknobs just tend to oxidize, right? But yeah, uh, much more happier with the production grade unit. Sans the oxidization, of course. But yeah, with the board like this, if you're building with carbon fiber, I would recommend using a higher pitch switch such as an alpaca. That was it that it adds character. <laughs> so yeah, you know what? In the future, I might try to rebuild the prototype. Just cause I, I do like how the prototype looks. You know, I like having the weight centered here versus this one like even though the weight is fancier it's kind of like put it's not so centered as you guys can see yeah I should do like a photo shoot with all of my yellow boards I just have to find sets that would work on them 
But yeah, um, anyway guys, hope you guys enjoyed this stream. My next stream is going to be this Sunday. Once again, I did my build stream earlier than intended. Usually I do build streams on Saturday, but the reason why I can't do it this Saturday is because the Seattle community is having another meetup. It's not like the big meetup, it's like a smaller meetup. We're meeting at the Optimism Brewery from 2 p.m. till 4 p.m. this coming Saturday. So if you're in Seattle by, by any chance, make sure you drop by. Uh, we typically expect 50 people or so. The last one I went to had 80. So, you know, fairly good attendance. So yeah, see you guys on Sunday, 7.30 p.m. PDT for the weekly Group by New Show. And if I don't see you during that time, hope you have a good rest of your week. Goodbye, everyone.